need to know something about green chemistry. Green chemistry is a very, very small part of the course. They could ask you questions on it. A lot of this is common sense. So if you think about the environment and chemistry's effect on the environment, there have been quite a lot of bad press in the past about sort of waste chemicals that have been flushed into rivers and stuff and have killed all the fish and stuff like that. Clearly, that is not green chemistry. We want to be able to have as little waste as possible. We don't want to see lots of smoke coming from chimneys going into the atmosphere. Obviously, we are aware of carbon dioxide levels and stuff like that. So we want to try and avoid things like that. We don't want to use dangerous chemicals, unsafe solvents. We want to try and get maximum yields of the product we're trying to make. All common sense things. So if they ask you about any green chemistry, just say one or two common sense things. On the subject of yields in reactions, they could ask you about atom economy. Now atom economy is effectively how much of your desired product is present compared to anything that is not so desired. For example, if we do a reaction like we had a moment ago, let's say we have glucose, C6H12O6, making ethanol and carbon dioxide. Now the whole purpose of this fermentation is to make ethanol. We don't want the carbon dioxide. So that's waste. So if I was working out the atom economy of this reaction, I would simply add up the total value there. So what have we got? Carbon 24 and 6, so that would be 30 and 16, 46. So that would be 92. Carbon dioxide is 44, so 2 times that is 88. And if you add those two together, this would be 180. So the atom economy of this reaction, bearing in mind this is your desired product, would be 92 over 180 times 100. And that then would give you the percentage, which is just over 50% not the, the best atom economy in the world. However, the harbour process, which we met in an earlier video, can you remember the equation for the harbour process? You've got as long as it takes me to rub this off. The harbour process, very important in chemistry because it's used to make fertilizers, is when we take nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas and we turn it into, it's a reversible reaction, we turn it into ammonia. Now based on what we said a moment ago, atom economy is how much of the desired product is formed compared to the total amount of product that's formed. So what would the atom economy be of the harbour process? Because it's the only product, there's no waste. So therefore, the atom economy is 100%. Don't confuse that with yield. The yield of this reaction is way, way less than 100%. But at least every time these react, they produce the product that we want. So that makes it 100% effective from an atom economy point of view.